All right. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, my name is Jennifer McConnell. I'm the product manager here at Protochips. And I want to thank you again for joining us in our second webinar in this series, Electrochemistry for the TEM. We're really excited to host this series because many researchers in the Protochips community have been working with electrochemistry in the TEM for so many years five, six, seven years, and they've gained so much knowledge about the technique that we thought it would be great to aggregate some of their knowledge for the field, especially those that are just now entering the field or who are thinking about entering the field but are a little bit nervous about liquid cell electrochemistry or they're thinking about adding this technique to their uh, research repertoire. There's so much information, there's a significant amount of valuable information that can be learned about materials using TEM, especially when you observe their dynamics on this scale in an operando style environment. So this entire series is meant so that our community with their expertise can share what that value is and how they got there. So feel free to sign up for as many of the webinars in this series as you'd like. I put the link in the, um, in the chat box for you, and we've got them going on all through the summer, and we'll have more examples with batteries, with catalysis, with corrosion. Um, and so feel free to sign up to as many as you'd like. Now, before I introduce the star of the show today, um, I wanna mention a couple of housekeeping items. One, everyone is going to be muted throughout the entire um, webinar due to the number of people we've had registered. And so if you have questions, please put them in the question box. And then at the end, when we have the question and answer session, um, we'll go through some of those questions there as time allows. Um, and then also, if you don't mind, um, if you could please fill out the survey that pops up at the end of the webinar, this will be incredibly helpful for us when creating future webinars. Okay, that's enough of my talking. This, this is not about me. So let's introduce our speaker today. Um, today we've got Dr. Yuki Sasaki, and he's a researcher of battery, in the battery materials group at the Japan Fine Ceramics Center. His work focuses specifically on liquid phase electron microscopy and observation of electrochemical reactions. And so he's gonna to talk to us today about reference electrodes, the importance of reference electrodes, using the platinum reference electrode as a pseudo reference and introducing a bulk style external one. And so, okay, let me go ahead and give this to Dr. Sasaki now. And then again, please enter your questions in the question box and we'll get to them at the end of the webinar. All right, Dr. Sasaki, please take over. Thank you very much, Dr. Jennifer, for your kind of introduction. And hello everyone, I'm Yuki Sasaki. I'm happy to have this opportunity to talk here today. I will talk about notes on lipolent electro for in situ electrochemistry. Let me show you the outline of my presentation. My talk today will have three parts. The first, I will express my opinion on the in situ observation of electrochemistry using a liquid cell or the, uh, and uh, its strengths. Then I will show you the future of platinum through the lipolent electrode. In this session, I will explain why platinum electrode works as a reference electrode and describe what prevents them from the working well. Finally, I will introduce an experiment with the external bulk reference for realizing stabilized in situ observation. I will also discuss the issue of the external bulk reference electrode. Now, let's talk about in situ transmission electron microscope TEM observation of electrochemical reaction. In situ TEM observation of electrochemical measurement visualize the reaction on the electric surface. TEM enables high resolution observation of the sample placed in the vacuum, but ordinary liquids cannot be placed in a vacuum because they evaporate quickly. As a solution, we use the liquid cell Hold it uh, that seal the sample with a gasket and to silicon substrate. 
to apply the liquid electrolyte to TM observation. The silicon substrate have an observation window uh, with a structure in which a uh, thin film that holds the liquid that transmit the electron beams. To observe the electrochemical reaction, we use an electrochemical chip. We call it E-chip, which is a silicon substrate pattern with the platinum electrode. By applying an electrical signal to the electrode from the outside, we can change the equilibrium of the electro electrode surface on the observation window. In such observation of electrochemical reaction enables following three experiment tracking changes of the same sample while several experimental cycles and visualize the initial stage of electroplating and the investigation of correlation between TM image and the electric potential changing. First, I will briefly explain the tracking of the same sample. Typically, macroscopic sample has a validation. So even if we observe the same sample, it is not easy to compare the sample changes. On the other hand, in situ observation makes it possible to investigate the process of the same sample. A second strong point is that uh, in such observation can monitor the electrochemical reaction close to the electrode, so helping us understand the initial stage of reaction that involves electrode deposition. Electrode deposition is a basic technique using uh, in batteries and the electrode defining and electrode coating, etc. The morpho morphology and the com composition of the electrode deposit are uh, important factors that determine the physical properties of the product. So it is necessary to understand the mechanism of, of electrode deposition and control the electrode surface. In such observation, may find how does it grow electrode surface. A third strength is the investigation of correlation between TM images and the electrical response. In the analysis of electrochemical measurement, we can know what kind of reaction is involved in our cells by decomposing the reaction components by using the cyclic voltammetry or impedance measurement. For example, the CV of platinum electrodes shows the potential for hydrogen evolution due to water reduction. An ideal in such team observation would be able to link what changes occurred around the electrode at the particular potential. We may also find the potential changes due to intentional electrode shape difference. This requires extremely precious potential control. And in order to control the potential, we also need a different electrode whose potential is stable during the measurement. The E chip we use for in situ observation has three electrodes patterned with the platinum, one of the which is a working electrode, and the remaining the two electrodes are the counter electrode and the reference electrode. The reference electrode made of platinum is considered to be unstable in electrochemistry and it's called a pseudo reference electrode to distinguish it from the normal reference electrode, which is expected to serve as a unified reference for comparison with other experiments. However, this platinum electrode often exhibits a relatively stable potential. As mentioned in the previous webinar, it has been reported that a constant potential of 0. 9 volts relative to the divisive hydrogen electrode RAG was observed in solution with different pH. Then, is it okay to use platinum as a reference electrode? This answer may be no. The less potential of different platinum electrodes does not always show the same value. The less potential of the pseudo reference electrode 
such an level depends on its surface condition. The less potential indicated by plasma electrode was actively researched from 1960 to 1980, and this research is still continuing presently. The condition of the plasma oxide film on the uh, is one of the factors that make attribution of the plasma less potential complicated. It sometimes changes the less potential of plasma vector. This paper reports uh, the redox history of platinum electrode affect its left potential and the reaction on the platinum electrode. This graph shows the chronopotentiogram of the oxygen detection in an oxygen saturated sulfuric acid solution on the platinum electrode. Curve one is a result of using a platinum electrode anodized for 20 seconds immediately before the measurement, and the curve two is the same measurement performed immediately after CARB-1. CARB-3 is a measurement and the same condition with the platinum electrode after a repeated reduction for a long time. According to this paper, the freshly anodized CARB-1 platinum electrode initially exhibits an open circuit potential of plus 1.24 volt. In contrast, the potential of long reduct reduces Cup three shows the plus 0.98 volt, which is close to the uh, potential of platinum oxide reduction. Interestingly, the potential of CARB2 with uh, platinum electrode using used only once for reduction shows the plus 1.05 volt, which is close to CARB3. This results result suggest that the equilibrium on platinum changes dramatically depending on its surface. Furthermore, focusing on the potential changes of the galvanostatic reaction, this potential is attributed to the generation of hydrogen, and uh, this potential is uh, likely to be affected with the generation of hydropower oxide. Comparing the reaction on each platinum wire, the less amount of hydrogen peroxide is generated in carb two and three than carb one. Therefore, in the case of in situ observation using platinum electrode printed on the e chip, the less potential of platinum varies by experiment or by e chip, especially in an in situ observation setup, it is difficult to unify the surface state of platinum. The potential of platinum is also affected by the ion contained in the electrolyte. This shows the redox reaction formula of the platinum oxide. And uh, this is the standard potential of this reaction formula based on the standard hydrogen reaction, uh, sorry, standard hydrogen electrode. As we can see, the potential of the redox reaction of platinum oxide depends on the proton concentration and the shift by 0.059 volt per one pH. The RHE potential is given by the equation shown here and the is found to be pH dependent as well as platinum oxide. Therefore, the subtraction RHG potential from the potential of platinum oxide shows a constant value in any pH. Furthermore, platinum dioxide redox reaction may also give the less potential of platinum electrodes. According to this, this formula, we can find the potential depends on the concentration of platinum ions in addition to pH. For example, if platinum ions are dissolved to the minus nine power of 10 mole per liter, it shows the potential of one volt, uh, one, one volt uh, when pH is zero. 
depending on the oxide oxidation state, this reaction can dominate the less potential platinum electrodes. The absorption of platinum dioxide can cause ion concentration gradient, especially in a narrow space such as liquid cell holders. As a result, the potential of the platinum reference electrode may become unstable. However, it should, it should be noted that uh, potential fluctuation of the local ion concentration is a result of collective variation. If the potential variation of the reference electrode during in such observation is due to the novum reaction, it will give us the excellent analysis. If the major potential does not match these trends, the other reaction occurred on the platinum electrode due to the contamination in the electrolyte. This is the open circuit potential of platinum electrode comparing to the RAG in hydrochloric acid, which was used for preparation of RAG. The potential is stable at 1.3 volt, suggesting that the near potential of chlorine detection, although the platinum electrode is usually independent of the concentration of chloride ion, dissolved chlorine may affect the equilibrium on the platinum. However, this is the value obtained from my preliminary experiment and it is not a precious experiment. So in important point here is the potential of platinum difference electrode can easily fluctuate depending on how people handle the sample. However, it is not a good idea to attribute all unwanted potential changes uh, and erratic behavior to the instability of the different electrodes. The operation of the potential step we use for the measurement was not prepared for in situ TM observation. It's embarrassing that uh, when I first started in such observation, I repeatedly got a long data with a long setup. But the initial potential of the platinum electrode varies slightly for each electrode, but it is stable as long as the surrounding environment, such as the electrolyte, does not change. So far, I have uh, explained to the potential of the platinum to the reference electrode. Now, I would like to introduce one attempt to acquire collect data that can be electrochemically discussed by using the inside UT observation. This is this is a method devised by Nagashima, uh, of the Toyota Motor Corporation, and they use a common reference electrode RHE. Since we cannot stably hold hydrogen gas inside the liquid holder. So we connect the external RAG between the uh, liquid cell holder and the syringe pump. And uh, this structure uh, contradicts our common sense that the reference electrode and the working electrode must be close to each other. I will explain this later. They also use a special homemade e-chip in this paper. The compared to the e-chip provided by prototypes, this e-chip has a larger working electrode with a mesh shape. This working electrode has three advantages for their experiment. This e-chip has a large electrode surface area and uh, that contributes to the electrochemical reaction and it enables high resolution observation and the reduction in bump of the observation window. The area of the counter electrode is also increased to match the larger working electrode. Now, let's look at the stability of the external RAG. Here is the open circuit potential but for the measurement condition, the electrolyte is 0.1 mole per liter per chloric acid. Uh, 
aqueous solution and uh, measurement is performed at room temperature. The blue curve corresponds to the uh, potential of the platinum working electrode of the E chip set in the holder based on the external RAG. And the red curve corresponds to the another RAG potential measured through the picture. Focusing first on the red curve, we can find the stable potential. This is an enlarged uh, view of the open circuit potential, and you can see that uh, two RHE have an offset of about 0 0.01 volt, and it also shows the stability of about 0 0.1 millivolt in 10 minutes. On the other hand, in the blue curve, the potential of the platinum working electrode of the E chip initially showed about 0 0.5 volt and then changed about uh, 0 0.8 volt in about 10 minutes. The reason for the change in the potential of the working electrode is not clear. In my opinion, it took some time for the electrode on the E chip to come to equilibrium. These, uh, of these two measurements suggest that the external RAG provides stable electrochemical measurement of the working electrode on the E chip inside the liquid cell holder. Next, I showed the cyclic voltage gram uh, measured using uh, external RAG. The curve A shows a CB with uh, when using a bulk platinum wire working electrode and the bulk uh, platinum wire counter electrode and the RAG in the same beaker. The curve we shows uh, CV when using a bulk platinum wire working electrode measured through a peak tube relative to the external RAG. Comparing the direction peak of the platinum oxide Curve A and Curve B both show the 0.78 volt. The also report it that uh, this measurement does not show any potential shift due to the IR drop, but this does not indicate that the solution resistance in the peak tube is sufficiently slow. The potential step has IR compensation with positive feedback. These CV measurement data successfully suppress the peak shift due to their IR compensation. Thus, although there was a large solution resistance in their experiment setup, its effect was not apparent in the potential sub control data. Next, I will show the result of CV measurement of the platinum working electrode on each chip set in the holder based on the external RAG. Curve C is gen uh, generally smoother than curve A and B, and the reduction peak for platinum oxide is 0.72 volt. The trend of, the, of this curve is very similar to curve obtained by CV measurement of platinum nanoparticle and uh, platinum thin film electrode. Focusing on the potential on the hydrogen absorption, uh, the peak of the three electrodes shows the same, almost the same potential. Although it cannot be ruled out the potential shift from the experimental setup. The potential shift was affected by influence of the electrode surface. As a demonstration, they tried to observe the changes of personal working electrode by using this external RAT with constant potential measurements. We can see that the stable current flow in response to applying each voltage. They also show a little changes of platinum particles on working electrode 
corresponding to the voltages. This data suggests that their external RDT works as a stable reference vector for insight on TM observation. Okay, I will now summarize the advantages of measurement using an external reference. Uh, first, it provides a stable electrochemical measurement for insight observation. Since the external RDT is far from the working electrode, there was concern that the negative effect would appear in the data. However, we did not find any noticeable problem with the process measurement data for IR compensation. The less potential of external RAT was stable for a long time and suppressed the potential fluctuation of the reference electrode during in such observation. In addition, since it does not depend on the quality of each chip or condition of platinum electrode, it expects to improve the reproducibility of our experiment. Uh, second, uh, it enables data acquisition that is easy to compare with previous studies. The electrochemical measurement data using this external RHE can be compared with experimental data of ordinary bulk sample using the RAG. On the other hand, uh, proton reference electrode need CV measurement with multiple peaks, which can be compared with other experiments. However, accurate comparison is difficult with constant current or constant potential measurement. As such, it reduces the influence of gas generation during measurement. When observing the electrochemical reaction with gas aversion on the counter electrode, we often encounter interruption uh, in the measurement when the working electrode is not completely covered with gas. This is because the platinum reference electrode is closer to the counter electrode than the working electrode, making it susceptible to gas in interference. Extending the different electrode outside the holder may make the experiment less susceptible to gas generation. On the other hand, there are still many problems with in situ observation using this external reality. Here, we will explain the point to note about this external RAT. First, this external RAT cannot discuss ignoring the potential difference due to the pH of the electrolyte. There is no cons uh, certainty uh, that the pH around the working electrode in the liquid cell holder is the same as the pH of the external RAT because the RAT is placed upstream of the uh, electrolyte solution flow relative to the e chip. It is mute to any changes that occur within the holder. As, as I explained in the previous slide about the platinum potential, ordinary RHE provides a potential uh, that depends on the pH on the electrolyte. If the target electrochemical reaction also depends on the pH, the RHE cancels out the potential shift due to the pH. However, in situ TM observation may induce the pH changes due to not only the thinning the electrolyte, but also the electron beam irradiation. It would be difficult to use external RHE on the uh, premise that the potential shift due to pH can be canceled by RHG. It is necessary to analyze data in the same manner as silver, silver chloride, uh, which always shows as the constant potential. And second, this ex external RHG is susceptible to environmental effects. This external RAG has a very long electrolyte path from the RAG to the peak, peak tube and the holder. So it's greatly affected by noise such as electromagnetic waves from the fluorescent light. In the paper, the peak tube 
and the RIG uh, covered with the aluminum hull to from uh, to form a uh, further cage to minimize the noise. Finally, the stable potential measurement do not get assurance correct in such a TM observation. Even if you find a large potential change in during the uh, electrochemical measurement, there is a possibility to get the result of the correct measurement in the in situ TM motivation. This RHG provides us with a near macroscopic data, but the data we want to observe using in situ TM motivation is surface sensitive data. So the stability of this external RHG as a reference selector has been demonstrated, but its uh, sensitivity has not been uh, validated. Okay, I would like to acknowledge all the people shown here at, at the end of this webinar. Uh, thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you so much, Dr. Sasaki. What a great talk. Um, we do have a few questions. Let me just go ahead and, and organize them and get them set up. And let me go ahead and move my seat here out of the way. I'm gonna bring you all with me. Thank you again. Your experience with the external reference electrode is really valuable. We've had a lot of questions from a lot of people trying to understand if the pseudo reference electrode doesn't work for them, what can they use instead? And so I have a few questions for you. Um, the first one is, what was the spacer thickness um, of those homemade chips that uh, were made when you collaborated with Toyota, and did you see any effect on your electrochemistry results if it was a thinner liquid layer? Okay, thank you. Uh, this one. This one. Uh, they, they use the uh, uh, 100, 100 millimeters of the spacer and the I'm not sure, but uh, there are so not so many uh, changes of the uh, the CV cup or uh, electrochemistry by using this uh, thickness of the uh, spacer. Okay. Okay. So you felt that the hundred nanometers, because our our commercial chips are usually around five hundred nanometers, and I know you have some experience with those you felt that the 100 nanometer thickness did not have an effect on the electrochemistry? Yes, I think. Uh, just for the... Uh, 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 uh. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, just for the observation of the uh, pr Prajan uh, Atomic, atomically pre, uh, observation uh, to affect uh, the thickness of the liquid layer. Okay. Okay, great. Um, the next question is, what is the lifetime of the RHE? Uh, I guess how long before you had to, uh, how long before you'd have to replace it? Uh, We we cannot use the uh, over one 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 hour uh, because the this special chip can cannot uh, the con continue the experiment uh, in the TM. So we we have not used the, uh, this RHG a long time. So uh, this is just for the uh, experiment for the using this this e chip. So. Uh, it's not. Um, uh, I'm not sure, but uh, we use uh, this RAG uh, for uh, about one hour. Okay. Okay. Great. 
Let's see, the next question was for your, well, I guess for your homemade chips, uh, do you plasma clean your chips before using them? What effect does that have on your experiment? Uh, Proton, uh, I'm not so many uh, tried, but the uh, proton cleaner uh, uh, affects the uh, 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 hydrophobic uh, for the uh, this e chip. I don't know why, but the, the blood, uh, proton cleaner affects the hydrophobic, so uh, we can use uh, this uh, e chip for. Uh, more uh, easy to op uh, operate your uh, experiment. I see. Okay. That's okay. And let's see, I have a couple more. Oh, I just had one come in too. All right, let's do this one first. Do you, do you continue to use, it sounds like, do you continue to use the RHE or do you use the pseudo reference electrode primarily now? Uh, sorry, uh, I can understand you. For your electro, uh, I think for your electrochemistry experiments now, do mm -hmm. you continue to use the RHE, or <laughs> do you primarily use the platinum pseudo reference electrode now? Uh, I'm I'm now using the uh, pseudo reference electrode. Uh, and uh, now now I. I will. Uh, I try now. I try the uh, new uh, the reference electrode uh, for more stably and uh, use. We can use uh, in situ. Okay, great. And then we just had one come in too. How do you account for radiolysis induced pH fluctuations? and changes in electrochemical kinetics, which can significantly affect the electrochemical reaction pathways and electrocatalysis. So how do you account for radiolysis-induced pH changes? Uh, it, I think it is very diff difficult for us. Uh, for example, this, this type changes uh, we cannot un uh, understand why the fracture is the uh, potential like this, but if affected by the pH or uh, something in the uh, our holder, but we we cannot understand why why it changed. So uh, one possibility is uh, this is from the uh, pH fluctuation or the any. But uh, the man, many other uh, factors uh, affect the, the, this type of the fluctuation. So we, we cannot, the, this is the pH of, uh, affect the, the potential shift or uh, something. And uh, we cannot uh, decompose the, the uh, effect the fluctuation. So, yeah. Okay, I, I, I personally have a question and then I think we'll wrap up because we're running um, a little bit short on time. But based on this question, do you find that flow rate, so if you flow electrolyte in faster, does that help mitigate um, pH fluctuations if you are continuously turning over the electrolyte in the cell? Do you have any experience with experimenting with flow and how that might mitigate pH fluctuations? Okay, uh, we, fo uh, we have found uh, uh, little change or little fluctuation of the uh, potential uh, by the uh, push, push faster uh, the solution. Uh, but we cannot understand why there's so many changes uh, from the uh, uh, push the uh, So, in common sense, the 
pH is not changed by pu pushing uh, the uh, electrolyte, but uh, uh, we we found uh, uh, many many changes or fluctuate by the pushed uh, electrolyte. So uh, I don't know why, but the, the solution flow uh, may affect uh, some uh, potential fluctuation. Okay. Okay. Well, I think we're going to wrap up there. Um, oh, I think we might have one comment that's coming through. So go ahead and type that and I'll go ahead and do a quick wrap up and then I'll read your comment. Um, but thank you so much for coming, everybody. And in the chat box, there is a link to our additional webinars. Dr. Sasaki is going to do another one for us later um, next year in the spring summertime or so feel free to sign up for as many as you would like and we will announce all the later dates the spring and the summer dates at the beginning of uh, 2023 but we'll record this and post this online as well in case you missed any parts um, and I'll um, Dr. Lanke I'll connect you with Dr. Sasaki and you guys can discuss maybe a little bit further uh, otherwise, thank you all for coming. Have a great day, a great evening, and we'll see you at the next webinar. Thank you, Dr. Sasaki. Thank you very much.